Hello everyone and welcome to another set of Zero K Exhibition matches. I remain your host Dominic, or am your host Dominic or Chad if you're whichever you prefer. And we have a match between Dregs and Randy on Ice Coffee. Dregs going for the Shieldbot Factory, Randy going for the Jumpbot Factory, and neither player looking to be super aggressive very quickly. Randy having a reasonably quick opening for Bandits, starting with the Dirt Bag, and... Sorry, Dregs doing that. Randy, on the other hand, getting a puppy, but otherwise just building up constructors. That's entirely it. Their only defense is the one puppy, just in case something tries to come up the main ramp. Now, granted, it's worth noting, there is actually a pathable space back here. So, you can... Ch you don't have to necessarily go just around the front. Like, there is... There is some room around the back that units can use. But the primary path is, of course, that ramp up the front. Not to mention, Randy's commander is blocking the path going over to the backside. So it should be okay. And indeed, Dreg's going out forward with that dirt bag just to scout out, see if anything's going on. Can't imagine they're going to manage to do much with that, or that they plan to. Same time, a couple bandits coming around the side just to make sure that the metal extractors aren't being occupied by Randy's forces. It's a bit of a dirty trick, but... An effective one to throw in a raider to just where you expect your opponent to expand because if they send a constructor alone then the raider will kill it unless they're playing tanks or jump bots then they won't kill it but generally speaking if they're if they're not playing either of those two factories their constructors are defenseless randy however speaking defenseless expecting the dregs is not well defended finds well finds their commander also finds the two patrolling bandits, which I'm not really confident of their chances. I mean, the pyro is basically designed to, to defend against them and is... Ah, I managed to get one by one, too. There's the pyro. Will be able to win just off of burning them to death. Still, though, it is forced to retreat. And Drex coming in here with more bandits won't be able to find it. Drex, Drex can... Oh, they, they saw it, but they just... Obviously, weren't paying attention there. Cursor over here. Same time, Randy continued to expand very aggressively. So far, I mean, granted, this map is a famine map, so so far it's not a huge increase in overall metal production, but still, there is an increase in overall metal production. While at the same time, Dregs is going to be able to catch up and should be able to get rid of, well, second Pyro coming in here. Able to run away, deal some damage, maybe get rid of a bandit off of the burning, and yeah, one down. I think this one's going to go down. I think this one's going to survive. No! Three down. Very valuable pyro attack. I mean, that pyro made cost. That just And it didn't even die. Made cost for free. Same time, dregs, though. Not, so not content with bandits. Also going for rogues in the mix. Though primarily Bandit Rush, but still Rogues. Useful way of getting rid of some defenses. Useful way of getting rid of Pyros, kind of. I means a little iffy. Pyros are quick and can jump, and Rogues... Well, their shots, they don't home. They do arc, which is nice, but they don't home or anything, so it's still kind of hard to hit them. Oof. And Dregs, while they are able to manage to take their territory, lose a few more Bandits in the process without taking out any Pyros... Still going for another assault, and I, I'm seeing Drake just throwing away Pyro, or some other way of bandits after bandits. Granted, they did manage to get that 3.5 metal extractor on the western side taken away from Dre Randy, and one of the Pyros does go down, but at the cost of half a dozen bandits. Not r really sure who's going to win that. Honestly, it comes down to who can secure the reclaim, and Randy is looking to secure that reclaim. At the same time, though, Randy losing the western side of the map is a big blow. Drag is getting that reclaim, setting up the metal extractor. Once they do that, it is going to be kind of hard to hold. At the same time, Randy's commander pretty much forced to secede. Or, not secede. Forced to cede the western side of the map. It's not really a secession issue. I mean, they're currently opposed to Dregs. It's, you know, their enemies, their opponents from the start. Like, that nasty traitor Randy against his existing opponent, Dregs? Secessionists. No, it's fine. But yeah, all coming in. This is actually not a big difference. There was a patch 
yesterday that did nerf the outlaw very slightly. Though that outlaw is running close enough to the pyros is not going to be affected. Still though, Randy losing all the pyros in the middle of Dreg's base, that should be... Oh, how much reclaim is that? And why do I not know? There we go. 430 middle reclaim. That pretty much makes up for all the lost bandits, actually. I'm not joking. I think that it determines the number of bandits lost if you take the cost. Okay, 430 doesn't quite make up for them. But it goes a long way to bringing him back some of the value. And Dreg's taking out yet another pyro. Randy's starting to get things turned around, especially as Drex has taken the Western 3.5. Now, the Eastern Supermax has been taken by Randy, but it's very ill-defended. Dreg's losing a lot of bandits in the process to try to take it out, but taking out a few pyros as well means that this is not the situation it was last time. And Dreg's able to take out the Supermax. Beautifully done. Dreg's gradually picking away at Randy's economy. Randy doesn't really have a lot to work with. They have some reclaim, but... Actually, do they have some reclaim? Yeah, they have tiny little bits of reclaim here and there. But they have lost the big field over here. Almost a thousand metal over in the eastern side of the map. Trying to take it back. Takes out the outlaw. A couple more pyros come in to take out the bandits. Opening things up once again. But Dregs has been operating at a massive metal advantage. Actually, to the point of being accessing for the last two minutes. Of course, that excess is the problem. However, Randy is trying to fight against a much larger army. If you look at the army value itself... Ooh, never mind. That last attack really even things out. Still, though, a lot of that is... Actually, no, Drake isn't accessing that much. I was about to say, but no, Randy's the one who's accessing the most. And has a smaller army by a small margin, and Dregs is winning on the attrition as well. However, Randy looking to take out the weak side on the eastern side of the map. Nothing is really defended either way, and Randy... Going for the Pyro Assault, able to take out a few bandits, but not quite able to push in. However, at the same time, Karatea going in the back to get the reclaim. That's Randy's real win. They managed to at least get some of that reclaim back, pull themselves back into the match. It's risky, though, as the bandits are moving south, but there aren't enough bandits to contest these Pyros. So ultimately, Randy should be able to take this and just use this reclaim to get back into the game. Well, taking that Eastern Supermax. Once again, Randy has control over this side of the map. So Dreg's not quite able to secure the Eastern side of the map. And that's rather unfortunate, because again, that's something of the key point. If that was secured, it would be a, well, it'd be a very different story. But it hasn't been secured by Dreg. It's been secured by Randy, and they are... They are looking for vengeance. Half a dozen pyros coming in here. That's more than enough to take care of all these lotuses. Get rid of a lot of metal extractors. Probably get rid of some constructors. The convict's going to go down. The felons can't even get in range. Pyros are a bit risky jumping in, but they do have the opportunity to escape now. Not sure going to take it. At the same time, the eastern side of the map being attacked, but to no real effect. I'm honestly surprised Drex is continuing to mass bandits. I would have expected rogues... Something to deal with the Pyros directly, but no, we're seeing Mass Bandit running into Pyro and getting themselves killed. And anyway. Dregs, though, does manage to pull out a few bandits. Despite losing basically everything in the back lines. Taking out the Pyros. There's at least reclaim that Dregs can use in the back line, and their economy hasn't been too heavily affected as a result. But Randy continuing to push hard does not want to let that go. Continuing with the mass pyro, which again is value. I mean, Dregs is winning the attrition game. Felons, however, are coming in, and that I didn't really point it out before, but they are a good counter. Uh, they don't have to worry about whether or not they hit. They have good, strong range. Their their shields aren't necessarily that effective against fire, but still, they are. As you can see, they are being ignited. But hey, it's. Gonna be able to deal with the Pyros, but Firewalk is coming in as a response to get rid of a lot of the defenses, which is actually just a strong response against Dregs. Dregs has a habit of building lines of static defenses, and Firewalkers completely stuff that. And Dregs coming in here with a counter assault. Pyros are basically dead if they try to approach this. There's the Felons coming in here. Should be enough shields to take out all of. No, not quite. 
Actually, the Jack coming in here, making this a lot more complicated. One of the felons goes down, the other felon basically dead in the water. But the bandits, they need to be able to do their thing. Getting rid of the two caretakers, at least slowing down Randy's production massively. That... Oh, that is a hard call. I think Randy is still doing... Not... Like, they're doing a bit worse, obviously, than before. But Dregs just lost a lot of units to set up that reclaim. I mean, there's nothing to really counter. That's the one thing. Like, how much reclaim are we working with here? Why can't I? Oh, right, because I'm two layer hockey or two layer key system. Uh, okay, 1.6k in the main base, basically entirely from the felons. So if once Randy starts reclaiming this, it's not going to be a big deal. Of course, losing the caretakers is a big deal. That does slow Randy down for a good minute and a half, and Dregs can use that to massively ramp up production while Randy starts accessing once again. So Dregs basically has a timing opportunity. They build up their forces right now. Don't go for an attack. I I like to use the racketeers, but I don't, if Randy goes for or sorry, if Dregs goes for an attack, they're throwing away their opportunity, and it looks like they know that. Just building up, setting up a reasonably strong army, so that once Rand because you kind of want to time it so that when Randy actually gets their production back online, which is about half half a minute or so, that your army is going to be able to crush theirs. Because there's no way that Dregs is going to be able to. Well, actually, maybe there's some way Dregs could push in directly, but this eastern side is too much of a threat. Like, it's forcing Dregs' hand. And that does mean that Dregs' best strategy is just to save up, deal with damage they can to the approaching forces, stop them from doing much of anything, and then once that's all been sorted out, then use their giant armor to attack after they've won on attrition. Which is basically what they're doing. Jack is down. A few bandits coming on the side. I I suppose this is about the best timing for it. Yeah, trying to synchronize the attack. Unfortunately, a little mistimed. And many bandits' lives were lost in the process. However, Dregs deciding that the, left, the western firebase is the best staging ground for all these bandits to then push in and take out the main base once again. But production has been resumed. Randy is back on track. And they are still managing to hold that eastern side of the map. Randy now with enough caretakers to be able to avoid metal, or enough caretakers and constructors to avoid metal excess. Just barely, but they are managing to do it. Ooh, and very, just building up all the defenses because they don't want to have to worry about this. Which I understand, that makes sense. I, there's all these units coming in, and you don't want to have to deal with them just wrecking your stuff. Uh, same with this one Firewalker. I think it's the same Firewalker as before, just didn't get killed. Kind of forcing Dregs to ball up and actually lose that initiative advantage that they got from taking out the main base in the first place. I mean, Randy now going hard on static defenses, which... We don't see much to counter it. I, granted, Shieldbot Factory is a little iffy for that, but honestly, a Thug Ball. Uh, it's not artillery, it's a Thug Ball. Maybe Thug Ball Racketeer. Like, a Racketeer support of Thug Ball definitely has a lot going for it when it comes to dealing with static defenses. But it's still... Well, what it is, and what it is is actually... Still not working out. Just the sheer weight of numbers. Dregs coming in here with the felons. Or the fel Sorry, the felons. The rogues. You don't even need to go over the fancy thug ball switch. Just go straight for rogues. Take it out that way. Yeah, outlaw, fel outlaw rogue with a bit of felon support. So the placeholder's coming in. Like, Randy's entirely focused on this. This is kind of deciding the game right now. The fact that Randy has this forward base that they can actually set up, use the Firewalker to protect, have Jax to help defend. Even with the Lotus is gone, that Stinger is up, the placeholder is still up. There's a lot that is going to cause problems to try to assault this. Alright, well, Dive Friend in the chat pointing out that rogues are a better option than thugs. I mean, I was thinking because the shields, but eh. Still, it is... Oh! And 
Almost missed that. Tactical nuke silo coming up because when your opponent goes for mass defenses, why not go for a tactical missile silo? That is literally what I do. I don't know if I'd recommend it, but I mean, it's a simple option that requires very little attention, especially when you have all those micro requirements for all these other units. Is the pyros are throwing themselves into a fight that they cannot win. Outlaws alone are just making the pyros' lives miserable. The felons, so the rogues, rather, are able to take them out in the process. Unfortunately, the outlaws do go down as a result. But it's still keeping Randy contained. However, Dregt needs to find some way of pushing in, or Randy is ultimately going to be able to just wear down the eastern side of the map. Of course, that's forgetting the fact that there is, in fact, an Inferno coming in here. And down go all the wind generators. Doesn't quite hit the caretakers, mind you, but the wind generators are still a pretty massive blow. That was a... That was... All of Randy's energy infrastructure, I think? I mean, there's a... Okay, no, there's wind, wind's down here. That's where it was. There's, there's more. There has to be more. He, he's making... Randy is making a lot of energy here. It's fine. But, no, it's... Yeah. Oh, yeah. Dying from now. I was pointing out the thugs for support is just keep the damage off the rogues while they get in range, especially when you have a stinger or something there. That's more what it came down to, in my opinion. But, yeah, that's a fair point. Rogues, definitely worth it for DPS, but we have plenty of shields with the A's. He just coming in here and or Aspis rather coming in here. He just being the stationary version. The Aspis coming here, but at the same time, Jax going into Dreg's base and making short work of it. This is the thing. I mean, Randy had this firebase right next to the right next to Dreg's main, and now the Jacks are taking full advantage of it. At the same time, Moderator is coming up the ramp to take it out, and Dreg's looking for a counterattack, and it is not working at all. Stingers, Firewalkers, Randy's own commander. No, Randy's own commander. Just Stingers and Firewalkers, really. And Pyro is burning everything up at the same time. Just completely finishing off the job. And now Dregs has gotten nothing in the main base. At the same time, Randy losing their entire base, or at least the productive capacity of it, to Infernos. So both players have essentially shifted to an East versus West fight rather than a North versus South fight. But the factories are still up, but Dregs, this is dead. This is all dead. There's maybe some hope of the Racketeers coming in here, but the Shieldbot Factory is dead. However, the Spiderbot Factory still has a chance of being useful. And Randy... I think they've turned the game around. They've lost a lot of their main base, but unless these rogues can... Actually, the rogues should be able to finish it off. But still, that Spider Factory being there... Randy has productive capacity. Dregs does not. Dregs has a missile silo, and that's it. I'm assuming they're going to be building another factory over to the western side of the map, but they haven't so far. Jump bot factory does go down. But the spider bot factory remains. A couple of hermits coming in here. However, Randy's army also remains. That's a big thing. Dregs essentially only has a handful of rogues and racketeers. Well... Randy has got their entire jump bot arm, well, moderator's jacks, plus a few ther hermits, just because, why not? Actually, I'm a little curious why hermits. Yeah, recluse makes more sense. I was thinking, like, you, you've got... You've got the jacks to cover the tank fact or tank part of the build, and just go for recluse. Use that as a way of just coming in, because moderators don't really work well with slopes, but that's fine. Dregs... However, losing their main production capacity, and Randy really doesn't have a whole lot threatening them. This looks like it might be it. Treg's looking to reclaim as much as they can, just to try to maybe rebuild another factory elsewhere. But it's just the fact that those jacks were still alive. That's what did it. Treg's... What are they... What are they reclaiming, or what are they building up to? Cut riot cannon. Okay, so they're trying to use their commander to essentially take Randy's old base, deal with Randy's army in the process, and Mabel's not in the base? Nope, now that's it. Dregs throws in the towel. There's the surrender. And that is game. A very close game, and honestly, quite the comeback from Randy there. I, I When they lost their base, I really wasn't sure how it would go, because I thought, oh, Dregs just needs to build up a bit and use that and go, but then Randy was able to defend the eastern side of the map, and, well, Wars that basically did the trick. Because the eastern, eastern side of the map was the key thing. Without that, there wasn't 
really a whole lot that could be done. Because without the eastern side of the map, you don't have... Uh, there's Well, with the eastern side of the map in Rand's control, they still have the Supermax. They had this easy path into Dreg's base. And Dreg's didn't really have an easy way of reacting to this because all the Lotuses came up. So yeah, that opened the door for the Jacks to jump in and wipe everything out in Dreg's base. Oh yeah, chat pointing out that Dregs didn't have the best composition for this either. And yeah, I kind of agree. Like, it was... There wasn't... There was a lot of damage and not a lot of health. A lot of glass cannon units. Because it was... It was an Aspis, but it got taken out quickly. And then there was just bandits, rogues, and a few outlaws. There wasn't a whole lot in the way of actual shields. So as far as a shield ball goes, there wasn't anything to protect it, and that meant all the units that would have been dealing the damage died to the three stingers that were hanging out here. And some racketeers. The racketeers, I don't think, were really in position. Not to mention, everything kind of funneled into a line around this section here. Which meant it made it easier for the stingers to kill everything, and the firewalker, of course, was burning all the units, because... Okay, I, I take back what I said earlier. Firewalker is not great against shields in the sense that it can't penetrate shields unless the shields are damaged. But if fire is on the ground, shields don't help. However, if the fire is being rained down from the sky, shields help a bunch. Because the units don't end up burning. Also, the there was a bit of a question earlier. I just kind of want to point it out, because there was a question that Ketabor was asking in chat about why high-level players don't use place. Dime for an answering it that it's hard to retrain, like, there's, the muscle memory is there, and characters aren't too bad. And I... That's kind of what I've said, too, is that there's... There isn't really... Like, there's reason to use it once you get about 30, 40 metal per second, but prior to that, it's not the most useful. Or if you're playing factories that have heavy units like tanks or amp bots then you might want to have a plate just to be able to produce light units in the process while the heavy unit is being built up. But for a map like this, like a fairly famine map, I wouldn't even expect a fax switch, let alone plates. Or a plate, let alone fax. I don't know. I'm not sure which one's more useful. Kind of depends. But yeah, plates are definitely cheap. I think a lot of it, and I agree, a lot of it is just muscle memory. It's a lot of people, you just have your way of playing and it works, so you stick with it. Anyway, with... Yeah, and Ketabor pointing out in chat again that thugs don't have a huge range on their shield, which is true. A single thug doesn't. A lot of thugs do, and thugs can at least... I have the rogues behind the thugs and then at least give you some room for keeping the rogues safe. Because the rogues are dealing the damage. The thugs are supplemental damage, but they're just there for extra health. That's all. Yeah, but the thugs can die. Eventually. The important thing is the rogues live a bit longer so they can take out stingers or other large defensive structures or large artillery units. Huh. Okay, Ketterber pointing out... Like, disputing how thugs just get chipped out regardless. And it's like, well... Doesn't fire... I'm pretty sure Firewalker doesn't go through shields, though. I was under the strong impression that Firewalker does not penetrate shields. Like Inferno I know doesn't, unless it's able to hit through unless the shields are basically down. It's fairly certain Firewalker worked the same way. If you're talking about a ripper or basically any other like single shot explosive type attack, yeah, absolutely that penetrates shields. Like that chips through shields. But I don't think Firewalker does. So I guess it does set the ground and fire in front of them, so that would still be a thing. I don't know. It would have helped. I think it would have been... It still would have been that extra bit of HP that might have done it. But yeah, I also think that there's a lot of wasted bandits going on the side getting destroyed. Anyway. Gonna be moving on. So the next match is going to be... Between Magman and Thurks on Fallendell. Which is... Well, it's not going to be quite... 
Which is going to be interesting, because I think I saw Magman and Thurks in the... Well, no, Magman, yes. I think Thurks was also in the tournament a couple weeks ago, too. This is not from the tournament, mind you. This is just a match they played later. Anyway, we'll be setting up for that, so stay tuned. We'll be back in just a couple minutes.